In this video, we will be solving quadratic equations by factoring. It's important you watch the full video because we will cover all the different types and tricks. Let's look at question 1. Solve for x in 8x squared minus 12x equals 0. This is the most basic form of quadratic equation. Here, all we are going to do is bring the greatest common factors outside the parenthesis and leave the uncommon factors inside the parenthesis. We start with the numbers. We find the greatest common factor of the 8 and 12. That's the biggest number that can divide both 8 and 12 without a remainder. That number is 4, so we bring it out. We divide the numbers by the greatest common factor. We divide the 8 by 4 to get 2. Then we divide the 12 by 4 to get 3. Next, we work on the x. For letters, the GCF is the letter with the smallest exponent. Here, we have x exponent 2 and x. We know that x is the same as x exponent 1. Since x exponent 1 is the smallest, we will bring it out. Once we bring it out, we can remove it from here, so this will have no x term. We then subtract the exponent 1 from this x exponent 2 minus 1 is x exponent 1, which is simply x. Please, master this kind of factoring because we'll need it for questions 7 and 8. Now for the solving part. The idea used here is that if you have any values multiplying and the answer is 0, then it means at least one of the value multiplying is 0. For this equation, we have 4x multiplying 2x minus 3. For this to be equal to 0, it means either 4x equals 0 or 2x minus 3 equals 0. We solve for x in both equations. Divide both sides by 4. The 4 will cancel out. 0 divided by 4 is 0, meaning x equals 0. For the 2x minus 3 equals 0, we first add 3 to both sides. The 3 will cancel out. 0 plus 3 is 3. Next, we divide by 2. The 2 will cancel out. 2 cannot divide 3 without a remainder. So you'll have x equals 3 over 2. So our answers are x equals 0 or x equals 3 over 2. Question 2. 3x squared plus 18x equals 0. Solve the quadratic equation by factoring. This is similar to what we just looked at. You can try it out first. We want to bring the GCF outside the parentheses and the uncommon things inside the parentheses. For the 3 and 18, the biggest number that can divide both without a remainder is 3. We will bring it out. We'll then divide each of the numbers by the 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now for the x, we bring the x with the smallest exponent out. Here we have x exponent 2 and x exponent 1. The x exponent 1 is the smallest, so we bring it out. So there'll be no x term here. We can subtract exponent 1 from here. x exponent 2 minus 1 is x exponent 1, which is simply x. We also know that 1x is the same as x. Please, master this kind of factoring because we will need it in questions 7 and 8. Now to solve, we can say either 3x equals 0 or x plus 6 equals 0. We solve for x in both equations. Divide both sides by 3. The 3 will cancel out. 0 divided by 3 is 0. So x equals 0. For the x plus 6 equals 0, we will subtract 6 from both sides. The 6 will cancel out. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. So x equals negative 6. So our answers are x equals 0 or x equals negative 6. Now let's look at solving quadratic equations using the difference of two squares. Question 3. x squared minus 36 equals 0. Find x. This is a difference of two squares question. In math, if you have let's say a squared minus b squared, then you can factor it as a plus b times a minus b. Please, the sign here must be minus. It cannot be plus or anything else for this to work. 
So for our question, our first work is to identify that 36 can be written as 6 squared. So we can replace the 36 with 6 squared. Now we can use the difference of two squares to factor it. We will have x plus 6 times x minus 6 equals 0. We said that for this equation to be equal to 0, it means either x plus 6 equals 0 or x minus 6 equals 0. We solve for x. Subtract 6 from both sides. The 6 will cancel out. 0 minus 6 equals negative 6. So x equals negative 6. We solve for x here. Add 6 to both sides. The 6 will cancel out. 0 plus 6 equals 6. So x equals 6. So our answers are x equals negative 6 or x equals 6. Question 4. 4x squared minus 49 equals 0. Solve for x. When I see a question like this, my first intuition is to check if it can be written as the difference of two squares. Here, 4 can be written as 2 squared, and 49 is 7 times 7, so it can be written as 7 squared. 2 squared x squared is the same as 2x squared. So we have 2x squared minus 7 squared equals 0. This is the difference of 2 squares. So we can write it as 2x plus 7 times 2x minus 7 equals 0. To solve this, we can equate each of them to 0. 2x plus 7 equals 0, or 2x minus 7 equals 0. We subtract 7 from both sides. This will give us 2x equals negative 7. Then we'll divide both sides by 2. So we'll have x equals negative 7 over 2. We do the same here. We add 7 to both sides. This will give us 2x equals 7. Then we will divide both sides by 2. So we will have x equals 7 over 2. Therefore, our answers are x equals negative 7 over 2 or x equals 7 over 2. Question 5. Solve the equation x squared plus 14x plus 45 equals 0. In this question, we have a trinomial. There is no number in front of the x squared. In math, we say that the coefficient of the x squared is 1. When you have a case like this, you'll find two numbers that multiplies to get the constant 45. That same two numbers must also add to get the coefficient of the x which is 14. This requires trial and error, and it's dependent on how good your multiplication is. The two numbers will be 5 and 9. 5 times 9 equals 45, and 5 plus 9 is 14. For this kind of questions, the x values will just be opposite the values you got. So here, x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 9. Since you got positive 5 and positive 9, this is really a shortcut way. If you're interested in detailed explanation, please let us know and we'll post a video on that. Let's take another example. Question 6. x squared minus 5x equals 14. Solve for x. This is similar to the previous question. It is important you make sure that all the values are on one side of the equation and 0 is on the other side before you solve any of the equations. Here, we have to move the 14. We can do that by subtracting 14 from both sides. 14 minus 14 is 0. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. We can see we have a trinomial with no number in front of the x squared. We find two numbers that multiplies to get the constant negative 14. Those two numbers must also add to get the coefficient of the x, which is negative 5. The two numbers are negative 7 and positive 2. Negative 7 times 2 will be negative 14. Negative 7 plus 2 will be negative 5. We said in the previous question that, for this kind of questions, the x values will just be opposite the values you got. So here, x equals positive 7 or x equals negative 2. Since you got negative 7 and positive 2. Now let's look at what you'll do when you have a number in front of the x squared.
Question 7. 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Find x. This is also another form of trinomial. The difference is that the coefficient of the x squared is not 1. Or simply put, this kind has a number in front of the x squared. Here, that number is 2. When you get a case like this, the first step is to multiply the 2 and the constant minus 5. This will give us negative 10. Step 2. You'll find two numbers that multiplies to get the negative 10 and adds to get the minus 3. The two numbers are negative 5 and positive 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Step 3. Replace this minus 3x with the two values. So we have 2x squared plus 2x minus 5x minus 5 equals 0. Notice we haven't changed the equation. Plus 2x minus 5x is the same as minus 3x. Step 4. We group two terms each and factor the common terms in each group. For the first two terms, 2x is common to both, so we can factor 2x out. What will be left will be x plus 1. For the second part, we can factor negative 5 out. What will be left is x plus 1. What is in the parenthesis will always be the same for both groups. If you get different values, you're doing something wrong. Step 5. Bring what is in the parenthesis, x plus 1, times what is outside, that's 2x minus 5, equals 0. Step 6. Equate each of the things multiplying to 0 and solve for x. So we have x plus 1 equals 0. We solve for x to get x equals negative 1. Then we have 2x minus 5 equals 0. We solve for x to get 5 over 2. If you need more help on step 6, please watch our video on solving one step and two step equations. So our final answer is x equals negative 1 or x equals 5 over 2. The solution to this trinomial equation has a lot of steps. It requires a lot of practice. In a test, the best way to solve this kind is using the quadratic formula. Since this video is about factoring, we will not look at that. You can check out our video on quadratic formula. Let's take one more example. Question 8. 5x squared plus 9x plus 4 equals 0. Find x. Here again, the first step is to multiply the 5 and the constant 4. This will give us 20. Step 2. You'll find two numbers that multiplies to get the 20 and adds to get the 9. The two numbers are 5 and 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 plus 4 is 9. Step 3. Replace this 9x with the two values. So we have 5x squared plus 5x plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Notice we haven't changed the equation. Plus 5x plus 4x is the same as plus 9x. Step 4. We group two terms each and factor the common terms in each group. For the first two terms, 5x is common to both, so we can factor 5x out. What will be left will be x plus 1. For the second part, we can factor 4 out. What will be left is x plus 1. What is in the parenthesis will always be the same for both groups. If you get different values, you're doing something wrong. Step 5. Bring what is in the parenthesis, x plus 1, times what is outside, that's 5x plus 4, equals 0. Step 6. Equate each of the things multiplying to 0 and solve for x. So we have x plus 1 equals 0. We solve for x to get x equals negative 1. Then we have 5x plus 4 equals 0. We solve for x to get negative 4 over 5. So our final answer is x equals negative 1 or x equals negative 4 over 5. Thanks for watching. Please encourage us to post more videos by liking and sharing. Also subscribe if you haven't. You can visit ultimatealgebra.com for more exclusive videos. You can also support the channel by clicking the join button or super thanks button below. Have a great day and thanks for the support.